Hello, and welcome to the ninth video on scientific writing. In the previous video, we began our discussion of internal structure. In this video, we will continue this discussion by looking at sentences. As we saw in the previous video, the same principles of structure and story apply at every level of organization, whether it's the entire document, the sections, the paragraphs, and even the sentences. In the English language, sentences have what is known as an SVO structure, where the subject comes first, the verb second, and the object third. Other languages have different structures, where the most dominant structure is in fact SOV, but since this series of videos is in English, I will focus on the SVO structure. Just to remind you, the subject is typically the person or thing doing something, the verb is the thing being done, and the object is the person or thing having something done to them. We can think of a sentence as telling a story, in fact, the shortest one possible. Loosely speaking, we can map the opening to the subject, the challenge and action to the verb, and the resolution to the object. And when writing our sentences, it's critical to pay attention to the topic and the stress. Usually, the opening gets interpreted as the topic, so the topic should be familiar, it should be common knowledge, or at least introduced earlier in your document. The last words in your sentence get interpreted as the stress. The stress carries the greatest weight. It should be your key message. So let's look at an example. Super radiance can cause a pair of atoms to decay more quickly because it occurs when atoms behave in a collective and coherent fashion. So what's the problem here? Well, it's that most people don't know what super radiance is, which makes it challenging for a reader who doesn't know. So we can fix this as follows. A pair of atoms can decay more quickly due to superradiance, a phenomenon that occurs when atoms behave in a collective and coherent fashion. This says the same thing, but it starts with an idea that most people can understand, a pair of atoms. Now, if you're writing for people outside the field, adding a technical term might not add anything, so we can just leave it out and instead write the following. A pair of atoms can decay more quickly due to a phenomenon that occurs when atoms behave in a collective and coherent fashion. Now, even if you're writing for an audience outside the field, maybe you want to define superradiance. You can do this by putting the definition in the stress position at the end. So now we have a pair of atoms can decay more quickly due to a phenomenon that occurs when atoms behave in a collective and coherent fashion. This is known as superradiance. Now it's also very important to pay attention to the subject-verb connection. The longer the gap between actor and action, the duller and more confusing a sentence becomes. The verb, which is the action, should immediately follow the sentence's subject. Let's start off with a bad example. Each waveguide intersection, regardless of lattice dimension or topology, contains a two-level atom. Here the subject is each waveguide intersection, while the verb is contains, but these two are separated by a discussion of the waveguide lattice. We can fix this by moving the parenthetical out of the middle of the sentence. And now we have, each waveguide intersection contains a two-level atom, regardless of lattice dimension or topology. I hope you agree that this sentence is much clearer. It's also important to make sure that you pick the right topic. Remember that the opening gets interpreted as the topic. So don't add unnecessary words and clauses at the beginning of a sentence. Let's look at a bad example of this. It has been predicted that the collective decay rate increases with the number of atoms. So what's the problem here? Well, we have two sets of actors in action. The first is someone doing the predicting, and the second is the collective decay rates increasing. Now, in this case, the real story is about the collective decay rates. So don't open your sentence with nameless people who did the predicting. We can fix this by collapsing all the action into a single short action section. We would then have, the collective decay rate has been predicted to increase with the number of atoms. I hope you also agree that this sentence is much clearer. Now let's look at another example. In this paper, taking advantage of dimensional reduction of poles, we computed the collective decay rates of atoms in a 3D lattice. So what's the problem here? Well, we have this long incidental qualifying cause at the beginning, but we don't even know what's been qualified yet. So we're likely to skim over the material since we have no framework. But we can fix this by moving the real topic closer to the beginning. So now we have, 
we computed the collective decay rates of atoms in a 3D lattice by taking advantage of dimensional reduction of poles. Here, the reader receives the information in the right order. Finally, what we need to do is make sure that we haven't buried the stress. We don't want to have words dangling after the real stress, so either delete these or move them to the middle of the sentence. Here is an example. Larger networks aren't always better, as a trade-off between compact network design versus quantum memory capability was observed. The important information is that there is a trade-off between compact network design and quantum memory capability, but the stress is placed on was observed. So we fix this as follows. Larger networks aren't always better, as we observed a trade-off between compact network design versus quantum memory capability. Here the important information is in the stress, and the point about observation is in the middle of the sentence. OK, now it's your turn to do an exercise. What I would like you to do is find a sentence in your paper or essay that needs fixing. Identify the topic and the key message. Rewrite the sentence so that the topic comes first and the key message comes last. The topic should be short and clear. The main verb should follow the topic immediately. And don't have words dangling after the real stress. Now is a good time to pause the video as you work on the exercise. Try not to spend more than five minutes on it. OK, so I hope you've had time to work on the exercise. Now let's just summarise what we learnt in this video. A sentence tells a story, the shortest one possible. The opening gets interpreted as the topic, while the last words get interpreted as the stress. And it's important to keep the gap between the actor and the action short. Well, this brings us to the end of our discussion about structure at all levels. And now the real fun begins. In the next video, we're going to discuss how to make your writing flow. See you next time!